The Super Nintendo came out in 1991 with an amazing lineup of games for that year. And then in 1992, so many more amazing games. How are you feeling? You got John Riggs here, and whether you rented these games, you purchased them with your allowance money, or maybe you even got them for your birthday or Christmas, here are just some of the games you were playing back in 1992 on the Super Nintendo. And no skipping ahead either, because you need to let me know in the comments which one is your favorite. At the beginning of the year, we got a game called Super EDF, which stands for Earth Defense Force. The Super Nintendo did not lack in great shooters, whether they be horizontal, vertical, or... I mean, you'll see one later on in this list, too, that has an amazing look to it. But in the meantime, what a great shooter this was. Maybe you were already kind of done with, like, Gradius 3, and you're looking for that next kind of game to play. Well, if that's the case, look no further than Super EDF. When you start the game, you get to choose what kind of weapon you want. And you shoot that weapon, and you can also make your little options go around you, and you can, you know, shoot weapons that way. Whatever's easiest for you. Great shooter on this one. Still fun today. Joe and Mac, great cartoony two-player kind of action platformer style game here. This game will always go down in my personal record book of the first Super Nintendo game I ever rented. And I'm glad I did. I had a lot of fun with this game. It may not be perfect as far as like play controls go and stuff like that, but it's just fun. And again, two players simultaneous, you can't go wrong. You pick up your weapon upgrades. Of course, it has that kind of, you know, prehistoric vibe to it. Unfortunately, it's games like this that make us think that dinosaurs and humans existed in the same time. But if they did, I would imagine everyday life would be a lot like this. <laughs> Joe and Mac, you gotta check it out. As we're still waiting for A Legend of Zelda Link to the Past to come out later on this year, we did get Wanderers from Ease. Now this is Ease 3. To many, this may have been the first Ease game you've ever played. Now Ease Book 1 and 2 had them on the TurboGrafx CD, maybe you even played them on the Sega Master System. And if Ease 1 and 2 is like your Legend of Zelda style game, East 3 is definitely your Zelda 2 style of game. Instead of being top-down overworld, you have the side-scrolling going on here. Still with your RPG elements, you can level up, you can get your upgrades, you can get better swords and armor and stuff like that. One of my most nostalgic video game soundtracks of all time is this game right here. I had a lot of fun with this game, still like it today. Wanderers from Ease. This is Ease 3. I love seeing Lemmings on the Super Nintendo because Lemmings was one of those games I've heard about on the computers, but I didn't have a computer back then. I only had game consoles. So it's so awesome to finally play Lemmings for the first time. Imagine if we've lived in a world without Lemmings this whole time, and then this game just now came out on mobile. It would be the top selling game, I promise. Easy fun concept idea, you have so many Lemmings and they only do what you tell them to do. They're just gonna walk in a line back and forth. You know, they're not afraid of anything. They're not afraid of like jumping in the fire, falling off cliffs. So you need to do what you can to get them to go in, their, in, in the uh, end portal there. And you do that by assigning these lemmings jobs or tasks or, you know, having them do different abilities like digging, like giving them an umbrella so they can float down safely without squishing. You know, some of them can uh, kind of be like crossing guards. We have to like put them in the way so they'll, you know, direct them in the right direction. I still like playing this game today. You gotta love lemmings. If anything, I hope you are fortunate enough to at least rent Pit Fighter and not purchase. I liked this game quite a bit, actually, on the arcade and even a bit on the Sega Genesis. The Super Nintendo port, not a good look. And again, a lot of the games in this video, it may not be because they're so great, it's just these are the games that you played, and if you saw this game, you probably played it on the Super Nintendo, and unfortunately, a lot of us did. So, misery loves company, right? If you haven't played this one on Super Nintendo, good on you. It's definitely dated. I liked it at the time for the arcade and all that, but on the Super Nintendo, it just wasn't a good port. <laughs> After years of having terrible WWF games for the NES, we finally get Super WrestleMania, which at the time, and even a little bit now, has some great graphics to it, I think. Ten wrestlers to choose from, it doesn't matter who you choose, they all have the same exact maneuvers, there are no finishing moves, you just have your basic punch, kick, body slam, uh, you thought I was going to say it's all in the mind, I didn't. Uh, we have, you know, body slam, suplex, you can throw them out of the ring and stuff like that. It was fine, and I still played this game quite a bit, but it just, it wasn't great. But it was something, it was, and it tied us over until we at least we got Royal Rumble, and Royal Rumble was pretty cool too. But that'll be that'll be another year. This game it wasn't terrible, and I did play it a lot. It was something. One, two, three. Super Adventure Island. Now everybody loves the Monster World games. Everybody goes nuts over all these new remakes and the reboots and all these great things with the Monster World series. Never mind about all that. I grew up with Adventure Island. I want to see more Adventure Island in my life. And Super Adventure Island, I thought it was a lot of fun. It moves a little bit of a slower pace. 
compared to the other Adventure Island games, at least it does in me. Same concept though, same idea, your kind of life meter is constantly going down whether you're getting hit by enemies or not, so you have to constantly pick up these fruit to keep it, you know, above the grade to where you need to be so you're not dying. And you get your weapon upgrades along the way and you just move along. Great music on this one, love the colors on this one. Loved me some Super Adventure Island. This game here is linear. You just go level one, level two, level three. A lot of the other later on Adventure Island games would be a little bit more open world. This one is stage by stage, still a lot of fun. Did you rent Zardian back in 1992? I know I did, and I loved it. Well, it's not really a run and gun. It's like a walk and gun. <laughs> kind of a slower pace. But you have three characters you can choose from, and you can switch between them on the fly, much like a TMNT for the NES. You got this robot guy that can also shoot upwards. You got this weird little alien thing with like a like a whip thingy that also kind of shoots. And then you have uh, Panthera, who is your, well, panther-type uh, creature here that can also do the spin attack and, you know, maybe a little bit lower key so you can go under some uh, tight-fit places. There's shooter stages later on as well where you kind of, like, join forces and become, like, become a shooter stage, but I remember just having a lot of fun with this one, so maybe you checked out Zardion too. It's one of those games that sometimes you remember or think about. You're like, what was the name of that game? I know I played it. What was that? Well, maybe this was that game for you. It didn't take us too long to finally get Contra 3. This was a game that a lot of people were looking forward to. And why not? It's another great Contra game, great music, great sounds, great graphics, great colors, great everything. Has that Contra difficulty, <laughs> so watch out for that. It's that Contra difficulty with no 30-man code. But like the other Contra games, pattern-based. So watch out for the patterns. See when enemies pop up. You'll, you'll, you'll do yourself better. I like that you can have a gun in reserve on this one. Like if you, you get your spread shot, your laser shot, you can kind of switch you know, between them back and forth, back and forth, whatever one you feel the need for most. If you die with that, well, you lose that one, but not the other one. So that works out all right for you. And of course, with the L and R buttons, you can hold them both at the same time and just kind of, you know, shoot everything everywhere all at the same time. <laughs> That's always kind of fun. Contra 3 is a classic. Still fun today. Still hard today, too. Man, I, I could never beat this game without a Game Genie. Love the big bosses, big explosions. Contra 3, love it. And how about you? Are you loving it? Make sure you're subscribed. I've already done a ton of other videos just like this, including looking back at Super Nintendo games from the last year, 1991. And I'll be looking at more Super Nintendo games as well as Genesis games, NES games, and a whole lot more too in the future videos. Gotta make sure you're subscribed. All right, finally, Finally, we got Legend of Zelda, Link to the Past. This is the game that we've all been waiting for. It's a Legend of Zelda game. We've been seeing it teased in magazines this whole time because it's been out for about a year in Japan at this point. I don't need to talk too much about Legend of Zelda. It's an all-time classic to many people who love games, many people who love video games even from the time. Um, this game still to them is their favorite Legend of Zelda game. Man, no reason why not. Again, don't need to talk about it a whole lot, but it's amazing. How about Top Gear? Now, I'm not the biggest racing game fan in the first place. I love me some Top Gear. And shout out to Top Gear for being one of the first games I can think of that has a goofy foot option for control method. I never used it, but still. It's a big old race, so many cars. There's like 20 cars on screen. You gotta outrace them all. I love the fact that when you get close enough or something like that, they start like trash talking back and forth. Great driving game, great racing game, easy to pick up and play. When in doubt, it's Top Gear, man. Still fun today. That sounded like it may have rhymed, I don't know. Well, there was a time there where the Rocketeer was like, you know, it was like number one in the box office. Everyone was talking about it. Disney, live action. So, of course, you probably rented the Super Nintendo game at least once. I know I did. It starts out with this flying thing. Now, you're flying around these poles, trying to beat the other two, uh, you know, pilots as well. I'm not even sure what's happening on the top screen. The only thing I'm looking at is this little tiny micro screen down at the bottom and just hugging these poles best I can. I, you, get, you get first place every time. And then there's other stages along the way too to mix up gameplay. Like this is you know, kind of cover shooter where you have to shoot the other guys when they pop up. You can fly around a little bit if that's going to do you better. I remember renting Rocketeer at least two or three times uh, back in 1992. I thought it was a lot of fun. Fond memories playing this one. Legend of the Mystical Ninja, holy moly. This is the first Goemon series many of us played for the first time, including myself. Not realizing there was two of them already for the Famicom, and then we only got the one. In Japan, they got like five. This game is everything I love in video games. It has a little bit of exploration, a little top world. You're in the town, you can go inside these buildings and, you know, even gamble or get items and stuff like that and defeat the enemies that are around you as well. Very cool effects, loved the music, I loved the style. And then once you're done with this area, when you're ready to, you know, move on and fight and everything like that, it turns to a side-scrolling game. And this is where you can move on and, you know, do more stuff too. 
weapon upgrades too. The coins you pick up, you can use them to buy things. You can also use them to throw at enemies as an optional weapon. The bosses are fun, the bosses are creative. I love everything about Legend of the Mystical Ninja. It's still one of my favorite games of all time. Spanky's Quest, maybe you rented because the title was silly. Now you look at the back of the box, you look at the front of the box, and it looks like a kid's game. Well, it's harder than that. Uh, at least I think it is, especially those later levels. But the game's simple enough is you have to collect the keys to move through the door. This is what I'd call a puzzle platformer, maybe like a bubble bobble or something like that. You don't have to worry about defeating all the enemies. You just need all the keys so you can get through the door. And the different stages, you know, sometimes they would be one key, sometimes you need, you know, three or four keys, maybe five keys. You can't pounce on the enemies. The only thing you can do is you can make these bubbles appear over your head, and the more you juggle them by bouncing, um, then when you activate your button, it'll turn into a different kind of ball to work as a different kind of weapon. And I'm a huge fan of Spanky's Quest. And as soon as you get over the fact that it's called Spanky's Quest, and you start a monkey, well, then I think you'll be all right. Holy moly, played me some Street Fighter 2. It's the kind of game I probably rented enough times, I probably could have bought it four times over. Now this is the first version of Street Fighter 2. It's only the eight players. There is no, you know, he can't play as M. Bison or anyone like that yet. But it didn't matter because those eight characters is all we needed to have a weekend of fun, maybe friends coming over, you know, just staying up late playing Street Fighter 2. Street Fighter 2 is the best sequel to any game of all time. This game today is still an S tier fighter. Super fun today. Love this game. I will never get sick of Street Fighter 2. And I still play it all these years. Tells you something. <laughs> It was also the year we were introduced to Mario Paint. Now, Mario Paint came with the Nintendo Mouse. I honestly thought that more games would involve the mouse. Now, there's a few of them, not many. Now, I'm playing this on my mister. I don't have a mouse hooked up or anything like that, so I didn't actually capture any footage, but yeah, Mario Paint was awesome. Now, I remember my friend and I renting Rampart several times, and there's a few steps to it. Now, the first thing you want to do is pick your castle, where you want to be, and you put your guns down. Perfect. Then it becomes the fight, you versus them, and they're gonna try to bomb your wall. Now your wall needs to stay connected for you to kind of capture that land, capture the area. So then on the next level, that's where you use your pieces, little Tetris style pieces here to put them in place to make sure that your walls are completely connected. And it's also your time to make walls around the other castles so you can claim them as well, which will give you more guns for your next battles. Make sense? Yeah, I love this game. Another one still fun today. They made this on a few different consoles as well. I remember playing it quite a bit on the Super Nintendo itself, but Rampart's one you want to check out. Now at this time, even though we were getting great games from Capcom for your NES, for your Super Nintendo, they were still also making fantastic arcade games. And Magic Sword, they made a port to the Super Nintendo, which was an excellent, excellent, excellent port of Magic Sword. It is your basic arcade style walk the path and kill anyone that gets in front of you with your big old sword. Love that. You get some items along the way too, including these keys. The keys will unlock doors to like prison cells. And then those prisoners you can use as your companion and they will help fight alongside you too, depending on who they are, what their weapon is. You know, you get to choose, you know, how you wanna, how you wanna fight. You got these bigger kind of Capcom style bosses at the end of these stages. You know, at this point, I knew we were never going to get Willow, the arcade game on the Super Nintendo. But we got Magic Sword, and I'll take Magic Sword, and it's still a lot of fun. I love this one. See, I'm telling you, the hits keep coming. Turtles 4, Turtles in Time, oh my goodness. Now previously we had Turtles the Arcade Game, and then we had Turtles the Arcade Game on the NES. It got the job done. This one was pretty, pretty similar to the arcade version. It wasn't one-to-one, -one, but I mean, as far as how it looks, how it sounds, how it feels, this game was amazing. Still fun today, too. There's a lot going on with this Super Nintendo version of Turtles 4 Turtles in Time. It's one of those games that everybody had. You could have rented it, too, but it was one I definitely had on my list of games I wanted to own, um, and, I, and I did later on. Took me about a year later, but I finally got it for my birthday later on. <laughs> The hits keep rolling, I'm telling you, 1992, a great year for Super Nintendo with Super Mario Kart. This is the first time we ever saw a Super Mario Kart game. Eight drivers to choose from, some of them have better top speed, some of them have better handling, oh, however you want to play the game, that's all up to you. What made this game fun, even for non-racing game fans, is not only was it, you know, fun, cutesy, car colorful, music was fun and everything, two players simultaneous, you gotta love that, but you had the option to get these items, and these items you could use to your advantage, eh, sometimes your disadvantage too. Great use of Mode 7 for the time as well, it was just a fun game, and the battle mode was my personal favorite part of this game, but Mario Kart itself, 
super fun to have. And man, this is one of those games that just, it never got old. You always just had friends come over and play some Super Mario Kart until the sun comes up. Nothing wrong with that. Another great shooter in Axley, and what a great use of Mode 7 as well. You start with your items here, you go ahead and choose your weapons, you'll get better weapons later on too. And how this game looks is amazing. At least on these stages. It alternates like every other stage. There are stages where it goes into like a side-scrolling shooter, but I just want to show you this first stage because it really draws you in of uh, just how, it, of what you could use with Mode 7. You got the three different guns you can switch from back and forth and back and forth. Sometimes you might lose them, but you might get them back later on, you know. Axley's a great one. Definitely want to check it out. Anyone else play a butt ton of Faceball 2000? I know I did. Well, nothing says arena shooter <laughs> where you're shooting these have a nice day faces. You can do two player simultaneous on this one too, and I know I did quite a bit. I wouldn't mind seeing a reboot of this. I mean, there's, there's something about these just shooting these happy faces in their face. Sometimes it's exactly what you need to brighten your day. You know, big, blocky, colorful. So it's not like, you know, it's not like really violent or anything like that. It's like you're, it's almost like you're just like throwing Nerf balls at these other have a nice day faces. Had a lot of fun with this one. Love seeing this on the Super Nintendo. Have a nice day. Now, Phalanx is a great shooter. However, you probably rented it because the box art was probably the greatest and most obscure box art of all time. But when you get past all that, it's a great shooter. It reminds me of a fantastic shooter. It is a PC Engine quality shooter. And that's saying a lot because um, PC Engine has the best shooters of all time, of course, right? This one, way up the list on great shooters, I think. I like this one a lot. Not much I need to say about that. It's just, it's good. Yeah, check it out. Well, maybe by this time you've already gone all the way through Final Fantasy 2, which we now know is Final Fantasy 4. Well, what's next? Well, then we get Final Fantasy Mystic Quest. Not exactly the same. The graphics are kind of similar, but just feels different. Well, the first thing that happens that's totally different is you have a jump button. That's right. Some NPC in your way trying to get through the door. You're just like, just move out of the hallway so I can get through. And they're like walking into a plant because they don't know where to go. You can just jump over them. I love it. The fighting looks a little different as well. It has that behind the back kind of view. Still RPG elements. You got your sword. You can heal. Whatever you feel like doing. And I love the fact that the enemies appeared like they took damage along the way. So you knew about how much damage they had left, you know. I also love the fact that you could see the enemies on screen so you knew if you wanted to avoid them or if you wanted to, you know, run into them so you could do some level grinding. Love that. They touted this game as an RPG for beginners, and yes, I understand it's not its not a true Final Fantasy game. They just gave it the Final Fantasy name to sell some copies. I still 100% love this game. I think it's great. Well, we finally got Super Double Dragon taking it back to its roots of just being a side-scrolling brawler. Two-player simultaneous if you'd like. This game moves slower than I'm used to for a Double Dragon game. Kind of a sluggish kind of game here. I thought it was pretty cool for its time. You got your punch, you got your kick, you can jump, you can also capture. That's right, you can block and you can capture their arm and you can do like, you know, special punches or special kicks because of it. Very monotonous, but it's also Double Dragon, which is also monotonous. <laughs> but love to see Super Double Dragon. I like the music to this game, too. Well, Acclaim made all the Simpsons games for the NES, and although I didn't think they were that great, we were hoping for a win with a great Simpsons game from Acclaim for the Super Nintendo. And this one, eh, it was worth a rental, at least. With Bart's Nightmare, you just kind of go around town, and you find these little pages that you can eventually jump on. You go in, you choose which door you want to go through. It's going to be a different kind of stage every time. Like this one, you happen to be a uh, Bartman flying around. Okay, well, that's something. Yeah, I mean, like I said, it was worth a rental. <laughs> Hook, the movie, uh, super popular for the time. And then why not have the Super Nintendo game? And this game I thought was a sleeper hit because this game was fantastic. You do move a little bit slower that you might be used to for a platformer like this. And I don't know if it's, I mean, it's still kind of based on the Hook, the movie, of course. But of course, in this game, no one wants to play as Peter. Peter Banning, right? So you just go straight into being Peter Pan. You can't fly yet. You'll learn the ability to fly later. And this is just the kind of the first tutorial stage anyway. But, you know, later on you fight the enemies. You can fly around and do stuff like that too. Excellent game. I thought it was. And uh, definitely worth checking out. Imperium came out and maybe you grabbed it because it was another shooter. This time it was a vertical shooter. That's right. And instead of being a ship, you're kind of like a, like a Gundam, like a robot kind of thing. Yeah, there you go. Just great vertical shooter. Can't go wrong. 
On the ball was interesting enough. It was a puzzle game. If you loved the bonus stages in Sonic the Hedgehog 1, you would love on the ball. Your ball stays in the center of the screen, but it's always due to gravity. So you have to rotate the entire screen to get where you're going, either by using the, uh, the D-pad or you can also use the L and R buttons. And this game is oddly addicting, strangely addicting. You might see this game, you're like, oh, okay, you know, I get it. But as soon as you start playing it, you're just like, oh, I, I can do better next time. You can try to beat your high scores and all that. Yeah, on the ball is awesome. Oh my God, the animation in Out of This World blew my mind. When I first saw pictures in magazines, when I first saw Coming Soon and all that, the back of the box, I was like, ah, the graphics don't look all that great. Like, I get it. But again, all we had was magazines back then. We didn't have videos and stuff. Until I started playing the game, I was like, okay, now I get it. Because, I mean, it had little cutscenes and everything. That little, I mean, you know, literal cut scenes, right? Um, <laughs> scratch scenes, know, call it whatever you want. And it was just fun to see, unfortunately, it was fun to see how you could die next. That had just had that look to it, that you're just like, oh, I want, I don't want to miss any animation. I don't want to miss any cutscenes, even if it means my death. So I spent more of my time probably dying in different ways <laughs> trying to progress in this game. I have beaten this game, but yeah, it was a lot, a lot of fun to play this game. No game that sucks this bad should have a soundtrack as rockin' as this. But we all played Spider-Man and the X-Men Arcade Revenge, loved Spider-Man, X-Men were red hot because of the uh, animated series on Fox. And you start out as Spider-Man, and you can do some things, I mean, it's not the fact that it's a really, really terrible game, except for it is. I mean, yeah, I, I know, it's LJN, what do I expect? Well, I expect it's something better. You start out as Spider-Man after this stage, you can be Wolverine, you can be Gambit, you can be Storm, a couple more, like, you know, Cyclops. But you still wanted to play it because you just had to be it. I mean, you have to show your loyalty to Spider-Man and the X-Men. And I like playing it because I love the music to it. So there you go. Hey, how about Star Wars here? Maybe more like inspired by the movie. <laughs> However, uh, Super Star Wars was, I thought it was super awesome. I just, I loved it. You just go through, the music was fantastic. I mean, the music might be the best part. It features other characters and maybe like boss type things. I mean, I don't remember the Starlock monster actually popping up from the ground, but still. It also featured a very cool Mode 7, kind of like land speeder type levels too and stuff like that. Um, and this is one of those games that just everyone had to play because it was Star Wars. You had to show your love to Star Wars by playing it. Magical Quest starring Mickey Mouse, this is one of those unknown secrets, but it goes without saying, the Mickey Mouse Capcom games, despite them being Mickey Mouse, are all generally very, very, very good. I know there are other Disney licensing that you'd, I'd rather have this, I'd rather have that, but Mickey Mouse, I mean the most popular, right? They're usually really, really good games. And this one, fun, colorful, cartoony platformer, has some little elements you can do in there too, but it's super fun to play, man. It's, it's, it's a great game. If you haven't played it yet, I would recommend checking it out. It's it's great. And not completely like children's difficulty level either. There's there's enough of a difficulty level that you'll still have some fun with this one. And it won't be such a breeze just to go through, through it, right? Rival Turf was a game I had to check out because it is a two-player street brawling game. Rival Turf was a game I had to check out because it was a lot like Final Fight, only this game was two-player simultaneous. Final Fight for the NES wasn't. This one was. Rival Turf, along with Legend of the Mystical Ninja, the first games I ever bought for the Super Nintendo, and this game I bought on a whim. Didn't even rent it first, I just went straight to purchasing it because I knew I'd love it, and turns out, yeah, I actually liked it quite a bit. My neighbor and I played a ton of this game because again, two players simultaneous. You have your basic street fighter and then you have your wrestler. I always play as the wrestler. I was a big fan of Sid at the time and this guy does a power bomb, so that's always awesome. And it is your basic, just side-scrolling street brawler game and it's called Rival Turf. And they had other games later on too, but this is the first of many from Jalico. And your favorite was? Let me know in the comments. I've done a ton of other videos like this. Make sure you check those out and more videos coming up. Make sure you're subscribed.